again. Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about the difference between a highwayman and the range highwayman. If this video seems a little, not, I don't want to say rushed, but if it seems a little quicker and sli slightly agitated, I just realized I recorded the whole dang last video without hitting the record button. I had all this beautiful audio, but no actual footage, and I was talking about the in-game fight, so sadly I could not go through it. But besides, that's not why you're here, you're here to obviously talk about the difference between a ranged highwayman and a melee. What I first want to get over is what differences you're going to notice between the two and when both are going to become viable. Essentially a riposte highwayman is honestly viable from the get-go. And I think that's why some people have such a bigger, dis not disdain for range, but look down upon it. But let's look at the couple of scenarios that are coming up here. So. We have two stress damage dealers in the back, and Repose would be able to traditionally hit here. But what we can do here is add a nice little pistol shot to the back here. Look at that. Bam. Beautiful. Got rid of that stress damage dealer. Do I want to soften this guy up? And now I need to do 13 HP damage. So you know what? We'll chop into this dude, and then we'll holy dance. So the range highwayman just gave me an opportunity to destroy a stress damage dealer that a Repose wouldn't have. And the pretty good deal is, is that even if I would have activated Repost, I would have to rely on people targeting. Now, right there could have been a Repost option. But you know what? We can now get to do this, killing one dude, still damaging this guy. So I don't think it's a bad break on our end at all. So at the end of the day, I think that works out pretty well. And what we're going to do... Ooh, I can even intimidate before the Crusader goes. Excellent. And then we'll just finish this up. But yeah. So that's one thing I do like, Pistol Shot. It's generally a pretty weak ability, but if you do work towards ranged damage, I do think it becomes at least, I don't want to put it, respectable. You do need a lot of quirks and items to get it up to the point where you can get close to one-shotting back enemies with a crit. It's not particularly something I would argue to mark for because it doesn't get an extreme amount of like bonus damage from the mark. I think it's 50%. Yeah, which, ah, I mean, looking back on it, I don't think is really worth setting up a whole mark comp. If you want to do ma major mark comps, just get somebody who can, you know, do the mark very well. But here's going to be another reason, if I get to go before this Bone Lancer. I got this dude practically down and not a lot of HP, so I don't need a lot to finish him. Wow, jeez. But I can hurt everybody else while killing him and still keeping up other DPS options because now I got 8% crits on other people and I think that's the biggest thing we're going to talk about is the fact that you get other crits and what do other crits do as you hear, see here they just stress healed and gave me protection so I can take in a non-traditional party get all these 16% crits on them now I'm now at a 32% chance which is pretty darn good so one out of three attacks could possibly crit you know or dodge you know that's that's the life of the leper but so if I get one out of three shots to critical strike, that's maybe three to six stress HP. That's buffs I'm going to get. And, it, and it's just also hurting the three enemies. So the question you need to ask yourself, if you're going to end up using the highway, like the uh, ranged highwayman, like what do you have to do to work towards it? Well, to be honest, the biggest thing is going to be you're probably going to have to wait towards later game, as I said earlier. It is definitely not something you pick up early on because I think it is trinket and also semi quirk dependent. I do have Warrior of Light, which gives 10% damage. So I do think that is actually pretty crucial. So I do think that the 10% damage is pretty crucial. You're gonna watch it here again, where we got another three enemies right here. And I could originally, with someone else, I probably could repost and, you know, like hurt him pretty bad and hope all the bone rabbles attack me. But we're just gonna get rid of both bone rabbles, get the crit chances going here in Holy Lance and hope it's a, see, you see that though? That was a 44% chance. I should have been slower. 44% chance to get a critical strike. We could have wiped this bone bearer off the face of the map. Now, you know, unfortunately it's still below halfway, but imagine that critical would have been done in one fight as a, I would personally believe a melee one would not have done. That's that talk. Point blank on a ranged highwayman is kind of awkward. You won't be shuffling a whole amount whole lot i should say when you have a ranged but i you will notice i actually do keep on duelist advance and you're gonna ask yourself why why keep on duelist advance you said this is a ranged highwayman yet you keep on debatably one of the sole reasons why you'd go melee the reason why i keep on repose is at, oh look at that i didn't even try this is this fight right here i could grape shot blast however you will notice that this is just too juicy of a situation 
not to take two potential swings at people on repost here. So there are excellent, excellent times you definitely want to have repost up, and it's absolutely useful. I, when I'm talking the differences between ranged and melee, I'm not saying melee is bad. I'm just saying if you ever want to find yourself, and I just did that to get rid of the dude. I know it's not going to help, but I can at least keep Holy Lancing forward. At least this turn, he'll get kicked out of position, whatever. He should go first. So I'll kill him, then it'll be position one. It'll be all, yeah, there we go. So don't worry about that. But yeah, so... Good times. Repost will definitely probably at least kill off one of these dudes, and when they want to make themselves visible, I can hopefully Holy Lance. So yeah, right there. That's why I do keep Repost on. It's such a strong ability. You can't, you can't not have it on, essentially. It's just so game-breaking in a way that I leave it on for situations like this. But overall, if I get the choice not to have someone in stealth and AoE, I will definitely decide to use Grape Shot Blast first. But since it would have only hit one stealth individual, I really do want to get both of those guys killed in the back row while I can focus the front down fairly quickly. At least for this party. Now, if I would have not... Oh, did I not bring any shovels in? Oh, well, we'll just take the hit. I have a medium. Oh, now we can watch damage get stupid. Okay. Now we're going to see some stupid damage. Because Grape Shot Blast, we will look at the skill itself here real quick. And essentially, Grape Shot Blast is what really determines if you want to do a ranged highwayman or not. So it's the minus 50% damage and the minus 5% critical. And the reason why I'm pretty sure they do the uh, oops minus the 5% critical is I think the ability would have snowballed way too much if they would have given it like even like a plus 2 or something. And the reason why I think it would snowball way too much is on the sole fact that you would be now having a net swing of 7% critical strike because we were saying it's minus 5, so it'd be plus 2 is 7, and then you get plus 8 on top of that, and then you get all the other stuff. You'd be easily popping off like a crit like between every two abilities, and that would just be so devastating. Even though you're taking like 50% damage less, getting a critical on like 2 out of 3 enemies each time maybe would just be way too much, I think. I think the enemies would melt in this game. So, I do think that's why they are the way that they are with that. But that's why I'm also saying once you get late game, the reduced chances in critical aren't exactly as crippling as they would maybe be at a lower level. This is another pretty good situation where we can either decide to kill off the cultist witch in the back, or we can decide to just scrape shot. I will, since I actually picked up a lot of stress from that, um, now it's a shame, but I can actually do that. There we go. So I still have the Stress Damage Dealer killed, and then I can stun up the Protection guy. So, at the end of the day, we got this guy uh, with some Blight on, and now we can just Grape Shot to round this out. But I didn't want a lot of extra Direct Stress, or someone being pushed or pulled. So I was willing to allocate three resources, but once again, a Melee Highwayman would not have been able to do that scenario. So I do think that in this scenario, it was very fortunate to have one. Ah, well, you know, you sometimes get misses regardless of what happens, but that can happen, obviously, so you know what? Grape Shot Blast is notorious for bad accuracy. Oh, that was a 5% chance. Well, that sucks. Maybe this fight's just not my fight. We're hitting 5% chances that shouldn't be happening. So you know what? Maybe I can blame it on bad luck besides the Crusader to carry me here. But yeah, it's up to your choice. Repost is so good, I can understand you'd be like, why would I ever deviate? But I do think if you work towards it, it can be something you want to do. So I'll try to stop reiterating that. Other than that, this video is uh, just to bring a new perception, maybe show how good it can be. Because maybe you've tried it a couple of times where you tried it early on. You're like, yeah, no, this is just a trash ability. I never want to touch it again. I just want to kind of show you at the highest, like the highest end... I don't, I don't want to say done professionally, that's stupid, but like in the best scenario, what can this thing look like? And it's pretty devastating if I'm going to be honest. I think I think you can shred through anybody, and the great thing is it's offensive, so you don't really ever have to worry about a lot of damage coming out at, after you. The only thing I'll say it's slightly bad is against larger enemies with a lot of protection and HP, not situations like this at all. So you definitely have to pick and feel your dungeons out. Like, I feel like the wield would be a bad place for a melee highwayman solely based on the fact that they have a casual protection and you wouldn't be able to get, like, all that raw damage into there all the time. So that is something I think you should be wary about that does exist. Uh, the reason why I didn't repost here is I really thought I could probably kill that Fusilier off with the leper and all that, so I was getting a little... 
I guess, preemptive in my ability to take out said individuals, but it happens. So right here, boom, 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 two HP. And then, depending on, oh man, got to go again. Eight, eight, eight speed, that I'll beat my, like, Doctor's 11. So what you could argue there was melee would have obviously have reduced this guy to nothing, and I would agree with you, and that's why I'm saying it. It's so good. But if you don't want to find yourself constantly using him just for the same generic repost, try it out. For the most part, I'm gonna, like I said, I will actually stop now trying to convince you. And we will just gladly talk about the damage output possible. And once again, we're gonna get even more dumb on the damage possibilities. We're gonna really just give this guy just the absolute uh, reckoning he deserves. Just get him right up to the disgusting points of damage here of so i might skip ahead in the video to the next fight because i'm done making my points for Radiance. said highwayman May we find victory. all right never mind that wasn't too long so this might be a good fight to show the initial weakness of grape shot blast so what we're actually gonna do is once again start out with a pistol shot sadly on the lowest end of damage i could have actually one shot it without even a critical but we do need to talk about that we do have that camp upgrade of plus 20% max uh, range skill damage. So this isn't like a casual, you know, we're going to do like 22 at X amount of damage reduced. That, that is a lot of work put into it. So, you know, we're not going to joke around and say that's that's how it is all the time. We did lose the one buff, though, because we did camp. So don't we don't also have the other extra percent damage. But we still have that campfire ability, which is, like I said, going to allow this ability to maximize and we might even see an okay crit here yeah 22 critical on 33 percent protection i mean just them the potential well not potentially he is at death's door so we're just gonna take this turn to heal ourselves, get some hp back and let him tick out so really good shot there still can output some decent bit damage with the uh, campfire ability all right we have another fun fight here we got some fast people in the front once again, we're trying to get out of here without stress damage, and I just really want to show off, there we go, I just really want to show off the strong quick strike capabilities of of a ranged guy. So look at that, we got rid of him in the very back row, and now that's going to allow me to focus on these three enemies right in the front row here. So it allows me for a good hue, a good chop, a good holy lance, maybe a stun if I'm feeling it, good dodges, wow. Um, I am going to get out speed on these last two guys, they are slower. But that's okay, for the most part, um, we're just going to absolutely punch them back now. Um, we are going to do just this damage because we will be able to... I'll actually stun you up. I'm hoping the Highwayman or the Plague Doctor will go first and we get rid of one of these Gargoyles. Here we go. And look at that, 9, 6, 9. Plus 8% crits received. I might crit on the Plague Doctor if I go first. Okay, sadly not. Wow, that's three dodges. That's really good. There we go. Crit on the Plague Doctor, some stress heal, some stress heal. And then we're just going to pretty much do a little bit of maintenance. And, uh, yeah, so that's so that's that fight. Um, ranged on this guy. He technically didn't get targeted at all. However, if he was here when he would have reposted, he would have technically got, I think, three attacks. So that would have been pretty devastating as well. We can't argue the facts on that one. So... It's pretty much same same arrival, just different ways to do it. So I'm not going to say that the way I was doing it is the only way and there's no way to get there with melee because that would have been horribly incorrect. Wow, we got a lot of fights in this dungeon. I'm glad really showing off that. So once again, I get an option where I can do all three, but I'm getting a lot of like strong stress damage dealers in the back row. And I'm just really not feeling it. So as normally as I would just grape shot the whole time, I'm just really not looking forward to all that stress damage, I'm, and I'd be more than glad to allow these two weaker damage dealers in front just do what they want to do. Absolutely, 100%. So that's why you're going to see me just not, eh, nah, we'll heal. Now, if I don't kill him with the Holy Lance here, which I'd be surprised on, I have a good amount of quirks and trinkets to do some extra Holy damage. Yeah, oh yeah, that's, that's damage. But even what I was saying, if, even if I could have not have killed him in one shot, if he had like 10 HP left, I would have gone first and probably just decimated him. So that's another benefit to Grape Shot right there, you would have seen. But as you can see, we're going through these fights fairly well. We're getting those extra percent crits. We have zero of that. 
I don't have a traditionally strong healer either. Oh, we did get a secret room. Okay. So yeah, but that is like the best possible ranged highwayman you can probably do. Like I said, my quirks are essentially maxed out. Um, yeah, so I hope I hope that sheds some light on a different perspective. Thank you so much for watching.